there, like the priest mentioned, there's thousands of spirit worshippers, you know, in different societies of spirit worshippers in this world. But he says, we are the elite. We know the real truth about the master and his angels. The master's grain plane for harvesting the nations, uh, for, for harvesting the multitudes of the earth into his cause just before the close of the great controversy between the forces of good and evil. So we continue, you know, after we uh, express ourselves that we're deeply interested to know more about the activities of spirits. And he said it's going to be done in a unique manner. This, this grain plane is, is, is going to take people, people are going to eat the stuff. Because he says spirits, demon spirits, will declare themselves to be inhabitants of five distant planets in the galaxies that are coming to warn the inhabitants of planet Earth of the impending destruction of the planet. Unless something seriously proper is done to avoid it. Control, that the alchemical managers have bred over a millennia, over a thousand years, they said they bred a human race that is most wretched, stupid, and ignorant. It's so unrivaled in thousands of years. He said these blind slaves say they are free and highly educated, even as they march behind. Notice this word, signs. Have you ever taken time to analyze a sign or a billboard or a logo. He says a medieval peasant would have run away in panic-stricken terror from the signs that modern man embraces. Just answer the question. Well, um, well, I mean, you just, I just had to learn how to pronounce it. I mean, it hasn't been a living, spoken language in more than 1,000 years. I mean, look at this. It says, uh, a traveler from distant stars escaped from a dying world looking for a way to extend his own life. His body decaying and weak, he couldn't prevent his own demise. Apparently, his whole species was becoming extinct. So he traveled searched the galaxies looking for a way to cheat death and uh look here he came to a world rich with life where he encountered a primitive race humans <laughs> a species which with all his powers and knowledge he could maintain indefinitely he realized within a human body he had a chance for a new life now he apparently found a young boy it says as the frightened villagers ran, night became day. Curious and without fear, he walked towards the light. Ra took him and possessed his body like some kind of a parasite looking for a host. And inhabiting this human form, he appointed himself ruler. He used the Stargate to bring thousands of people here to this planet as workers for the mines. Just like the one we saw, this mineral is clearly the building block of all his technology. With this, he can sustain eternal life. Now, uh, something happened, where is it, back on Earth? A rebellion or uprising, and the Stargate was buried there. Fearful of a rebellion here, Ra outlawed reading and writing. He didn't want the people to remember the truth. What? 
point did this demon worship start to affect you personally, Roger? Well, <clears throat> it wasn't too long that the priest mentioned to us that uh, the time had arrived for us to start trusting the spirits and give the spirits a chance to work for us. And there was a number of gifts that you could choose from. Americans are asking, why do they hate us? They hate what they see right here in this chamber, a democratically elected government. Number 10, deal with the use of slogans such as equity, liberty, fraternity into the mouths of the masses in psychological warfare. Boy, if that isn't Bill Clinton, I never saw it, never heard it before. That man is unbelievable. As uh, former Congressman Denemeyer describes him, he's a Draft dodging, womanizing, pathological liar. And he certainly fits into item number 10. Number 11 dealt with war. Number 11 theory and goal. In 1773, Adam Weishaupt set down policies that were put publicly announced in 1939, folks. 1773, publicly announced 1939 by Britain and the United States. And the war should be directed so that the nations on both sides are placed further in debt and peace conferences conducted so neither combatants obtain territorial rights. Yalta. Perfect example. Stalin, Roosevelt, Winston Churchill after World War II. Number 12. Told those present that they must use their wealth to have candidates chosen in public office who would be obedient to their demands and would be used as pawns in the game by the men behind the scenes. The advisors will have been bred, reared, and trained from childhood to rule the affairs of the world. We have that today without any question. The men behind the scenes. Number 13, control the press. If you heard my lecture yesterday on Oklahoma City, I documented that the mainstream media is being controlled by the big power people, by the phony politicians, by the bureaucrats, without any question about it. Now a question. What have Herbert Hoover, Art Linkletter, Jack London, and Richard Nixon all had in common? Well, they've all been members of the exclusive all-male Bohemian Club in California, where every year at this time, the elite from around the country get together for two and a half weeks of uh, fun and games. Among its members are businessmen like Leonard Firestone and Edgar Kaiser, and political figures like Gerald Ford, Henry Kissinger, William French Smith, and George Shultz. President Reagan, Vice President Bush, and Defense Secretary Weinberger are members of other camps. Richard Nixon is a bohemian, and so are high-ranking executives of such companies as Eastern Airlines, Standard Oil of Indiana, and Bank of America. Privacy is one of the Grove's most cherished virtues. Members may not photograph, record, speak, or write about activities at the retreat. While many public officials are Grove members, the press is a distinctly unwelcome guest. We're from ABC News. Well, get back there. Get back there. Can we talk to somebody in there? Get back there. Thank you. 